The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Now I'd like to demonstrate multi-slit diffraction patterns. Now normally one would take a let's say, a piece of glass with, uh, with a ruling on it, many, many lines, many uh, dark lines on a piece of glass, and then one would shine the laser light through it and look on the screen and see the multi-slit diffraction pattern. But we're going to do it a little differently. What we're going to do, we're going to introduce one slit at a time until we will build up to the many slits. So you can see the contribution of each slit. And we're going to do it in this way. We have the same setup as before. Here's our laser and the two mirrors and the lens to expand the beam. Here's the expanded beam. Now over here, we have, a, we have two things. Uh, we have, first of all, we have a pair of jaws here, which are two razor blades, which I can adjust the spacing between the razor blades. I can adjust with this translation stage over here. And then right behind the razor blades, there is a piece of glass, which is a Ronke ruling, just a piece of glass with black lines. The thickness of each black line is about 75 microns. And the spacing between the black lines is about 125 microns. Uh, is about 250 lines per inch, uh, if you want. So this is then the, uh, this Ronke ruling, this, this, uh, uh, this piece of glass with all these uh, narrow slits on, on it. The screen is, uh, as before, is 200 centimeters away. And again, the wavelength of light is uh, 6,328 6, angstroms. So now, Let's look at, first of all, let's close down the jaws, look at the screen, and, and see if we can see the single slit diffraction pattern. All right, here we have the single slit diffraction pattern. I have to apologize because we, when we close down the jaws, we don't have much light. And so, uh, but I hope you can still see the single slit diffraction pattern. Now, the, on the screen, we have the circles. The circles are the five centimeter markers. And the little arrow tips, uh, as you can see, uh, they mark the, the zeros of the uh, central lobe of the single slit diffraction pattern associated with the uh, 50 micron or so uh, uh, slit on this Ronke ruling. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going now to separate the jaws to admit one more the second slit. Now, those of you who understand this theory very will quickly verify that indeed you'll see three, three lobes then, three lobes within the single slit uh, principal lobe. Now I'm going to add one more slit by again opening up the jaws. As I bring in one more slit, now we have three slits and, and look at the pattern now, it generates some some weaker lobes in between, and the lobes themselves are getting uh, uh, narrower. Now we'll add one more. Here it is, four, and here it is, five, six, seven, and so on. I'm just going to keep enlarging the spacing, and you can see that, uh, first of all, that the principal three lobes get, get narrower and narrower and then you get a lot more little side lobes in between. So as I widen the space in between the jaws, you can see that those three lobes will get narrower and narrower. And of course, you'll see the ones from, from these uh, other side lobes also. There's little dots uh, to the side. Now, the intensity is so bright that it's saturating our camera. So uh, what we'd like to do, we'll, we'll take a little close-up so we can resolve 
the, the lobe. So if you can go in and take a close look at, at the three lobes in the center, Here we are. Let me go back again to when I had only two slits in there. Now I've added the third, the fourth, fifth, and so on. As you can see, the, the width of the three principal lobes are getting narrower and narrower. And now I have Lots of slits now, and again, the intensity is high, so I can't really tell how narrow, but I know it looks very narrow, so maybe we can cut down the sensitivity a little bit on the camera. And let's see if we get a feel of how narrow these spots will be. Again. All I can say, they look, they look pretty, pretty narrow, and I leave it, and I leave it to you to calculate how narrow uh, they become. Because I've given you all the data, I've given you the spacing between the slits, I've given you the width of the slits, and the wavelength of the light, and the distance between the slits and the, and the screen. So in, in, in summary, this is a very, very cute experiment, demonstration of how each the addition of each slit contributes to the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern. Now we're going to look at multi-slit diffraction as a function of line spacing. What we have here are Ronchi rulings, which are pieces of glass with lots of lines drawn on them. Uh, this one here has about 100 lines per inch. So we're going to put this Ronchi ruling in here in our setup. And uh, the setup is the same as before uh, with this lens here to, uh, to enlarge the beam so we can illuminate uh, as many of the, uh, of the lines as, uh, as possible. We've also added this, uh, this attenuator here so that we can adjust the intensity of the light uh, when, uh, when we need to. So now let's look at, let's look at the screen and see what, uh, what we can see with this, with this Ronchi ruling of 100 lines per, per, uh, per inch. As you can see, there are uh, plenty, plenty of very narrow dots and in fact, if you want to get a feel for this scale, the little circles just below the, uh, the, below the diffraction pattern uh, are the five centimeter markers that we've had uh, before. Now, if I attenuate the intensity a little bit, you can see that the ones in the center are, are the brightest, of course. And also, uh, as I reduce intensity, you can see that the spots are really uh, very small. Now, if I've given you the number of lines per inch and the spacing between the Ronchi ruling and the screen is uh, again 200 centimeters and the wavelength is 6328 angstroms, uh, you should be able to check on the, on the spacing between the, the, uh, the fringes and also on their, on their widths. So here they are when I overexpose them so we can see the ones way out uh, in the wings. Okay, so this is then uh, the diffraction pattern, the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern uh, associated with a Ronchi ruling of 100 lines per inch. Now let's look at 200 lines per inch. So here is the 200 lines per inch, and you can see that the spacing now is different, but I, I leave it to you to, to check on it. And again, if I reduce the intensity, and you get at least a little bit of a feel for how narrow these dots are. They're indeed very bright because they're saturating our, our camera. All right, so that's for then 200 lines per inch. Now, 
we go to 300 lines per inch. Again, the spacing is, uh, is different. And also, if I change the orientation of the lines, you can see that the diffraction pattern also, also changes. All right, so that's then for 300 lines per inch. The next one is 2,000 lines per inch. Now, when I put it over here, you can see that the spacing uh, between, between the fringes are about 10, 10 centimeters. And again, that gives you a check on, on, the, uh, on the number of lines per, per centimeter or per inch as we have it. Now, let me see. If, I, if we pull back a little bit, pull back on the camera to see the, the other dots, yes, here they are. But they're so widely spaced, it's difficult to get them all on the, on the camera at once. So if we go back to the original position, if we go in again, here we are. And now I'm going to, again, reduce the intensity. And you can see how, how narrow the, the spots are. All right, so this then sums up multi-slit diffraction pattern as a function of line spacing. In the, in the next demonstration, we're going to show the opposite effect. Instead of slits, we're going to use thin wires. And then when we come back, we'll show you what the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern for very thin wires looks like.